So it looks like Justin Trudeau's support is continuing to plummet at even lower numbers, which again, makes us all happy. This is great news, of course. Uh, but let's go over some polling numbers as every Sunday I am going to be doing a polling update just to keep you guys updated on the numbers and just to kind of go through some other polling information that we have as well, especially from 338 Canada, which again is the, uh, they're, they're the aggregate, they're, they're, they're the average of all the polls basically. So this isn't their own poll. This is like a, an average out of all the polls, you know, from Main Street, Nanos, Abacus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have here is not really anything changing with the conservatives still around 43% on average, but the liberals down to 22% on average. So they've dropped a little bit, but here's the really important number. So you go here, their average is now at 53 and the blocks is 42 in terms of seats. So, I mean, the liberals are continuing to take a to, to, to plummet and not just their popular support or the, their, their popular vote, but also by the amount of seats that they're likely to get, because here the range is now from 34 to 77. I did a, um, a video, I believe it was yesterday, where I did a simulation and it showed the high end was in the 80s for the Liberals and now it's only in the 70s. That's quite a big drop in just one week. Now again, we also have rumors of you know pro-regression, which means you know the, the government's basically going to shut down, nothing can be passed uh, until I believe January. So um, I mean, there's rumors that Justin Trudeau is going to do that. Uh, just to kind of buy himself some time. But again, he, all he's really doing is just delaying the inevitable. Not to mention, that's probably going to piss a lot more Canadians off. He might even lose even more support, which I do predict happening for sure, especially as we get into the new year with more taxes coming. The or Sorry, the, um, the carbon tax going up again for the fourth time. That's going to piss people off as well. So again, and, and now you look at this low end number here, 34 that's exactly what Michael Ignatiev finished with in 2011, which was one of the worst years, if not the worst year, the Liberals ever had. And we're getting closer and closer and closer to that number. I also did a simulation where, best case scenario for the Conservatives, the Liberals could lose, or sorry, the, the Liberals might only end up with like 18 seats, right? So you go over here to the simulator. So best case scenario for the Conservatives, so Liberals at 20%. And then we'll go with the Conservatives at 46%. And then we'll move, say, the NDP. Move them up a little bit. We'll move the blocks up a little bit here so we can get as close to 100% as possible. So 99.7, close enough. So let's get this seat projection here. 15 seats. That's the new low end. The other day it was 18. So they essentially lost three more seats in just one week of polling. Imagine if that continues, they'll be at zero pretty quick. And by the way, if they get below 12, they lose party status, which again would be hilarious and deserving. So, I mean, as, the longer that Justin Trudeau, you know, if he does this pro regression crap and then he continues to stay in office, he doesn't step down. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. I do end up, I do believe that the total vote percentage wise for the liberals and Justin Trudeau is going to be lower than 20%. I really do. Who knows, things can change, but it's only going to get worse and worse and worse, and they're not doing anything about it. They're just doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down on their bad policies. Okay? So if this were to happen, if the Liberals were to get 20%, the NDP got 18 the Conservatives get 46 that's 253 seats. Then the Bloc would be the official opposition. In this model, the NDP would actually only lose uh, one seat, which I think they're actually going to lose more than that as well. Yeah, Jugmeet Singh has made it very clear that he wants to take on Pierre Polyev. However, Canadians don't seem to believe that he's the guy to do it. Which also leads me to my next question. Right, so since we have the NDP at around 18% on average, 18 seats, I mean, they're, they're due to come in fourth place. If that happens, you got to think the NDP is going to be having a really hard look at removing this guy from leader. I don't know who they have. I don't know if they have anyone better. However, if Jugmeet Singh and the NDPs come in fourth place, it's like, okay, we went from third to fourth under Jugmeet Singh. We're broke under Jugmeet Singh. We can't even run a constituency office under Jugmeet Singh. Like, what would it take for the NDP party to realize, hey, this guy's a loser? He cannot continue to be the leader of this party. He's taking us into the ground. Fourth place? The block's going to finish ahead of you? That would be a disaster for them. Again, well-deserved, because their whole party is a disaster. 
but again, you know, if you're um, you know, if you're a left wing minded person, like where do you go? I mean, if you're like a slightly left leaning person, which that's where I would put myself. Right, I would consider myself a left leaning populist. Pierre Polyev is the closest thing to what I want. Conservatives are not supposed to be closer to us. The Liberal Party is supposed to be closer to us. The NDP party is supposed to support Canadian workers, the average people, the middle class. That's supposed to be the party that is going to be different than the Conservatives and the Liberals, but they're not. They're actually even worse than the Liberal Party, I'll be honest with you. If I was forced to vote between Justin Trudeau or Jugmeet Singh, I'll be honest with you, I'd vote for Trudeau. That really felt horrible to say that, just admitting you would vote for Justin Trudeau. But if it was between just those two, I honestly think Jugmeet Singh would be worse. And I think that a lot of Canadians also think that way. More bad news for the NDP and Jugmeet Singh. But then again, I don't, I don't think they have another Tom Mulclair to come and take over. And again, I don't know too much about his politics, but he seemed like a decent person, a decent politician. He seemed reasonably liked. Jugmeet Singh, Elizabeth May, and Maxime Bernier, the, 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 the reason they can't really get anywhere is because all three of those leaders or leaders are very weak and no one likes them. So if any of these parties want to be taken seriously in the future, you need a more of a left-leaning populist. Someone who's actually there for working Canadians. Not these not these phonies who come in and say, oh, I'm here for Canadians. It's like, okay, um, Jugmeet Singh, why, why are you running around in, in a limo? Why do you have Gucci bags? Why do you have gold Rolexes when Canadians are on the street? And you're not doing anything to help them. And considering that he had a coalition for two years with Justin Trudeau, and it's only gotten worse. I mean, wh where do you go? And that's why Pierre Polyev is gaining so much support, because you have these people like me who are more left wing minded, who are going to vote conservative for the first time in my life. I haven't really given a shit about politics for the most part for a lot of my life, but in the last few years I've gotten into it. And in 2021, I actually voted for Max Bernier. I, I just decided, you know what, I'm not going to vote to try to get anyone out. I'm just going to read the policies and here's what I agree with. Oh, we have a populist party. Okay. Sounds good to me, so I voted for him. I threw away my vote. I will not be doing that this time. I will be voting for Pierre Polyev unless he starts going off on these you know, warmonger tangents like the you know, some American politicians or you know Canadian politicians as well. I'm not going to get specific on which war I'm talking about, but I think you all know that, but YouTube is pretty strict, apparently, in terms of uh, talking about certain wars. But if I hear any kind of warmongering garbage from Pierre Polyev, I'll be staying home. I know that might piss some of you off. I completely understand. I just made a promise to myself that I will never, ever, ever, ever vote for someone who wants to fund any kind of a war unless we're in a World War II situation where we have to defend ourselves. That is the only time we should ever be going to war. And if I find out Pierre Polyev feels different, he's losing my vote. That doesn't mean I'm going to vote for Trudeau or Jugmeet Singh. I'm just going to stay home and see what happens. I will not vote for a warmonger ever. Again, that might make some of you upset, but you have to understand where I'm coming from. I'm just never going to write my name on a ballot. Yep, more war, please. It's just not going to happen. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Now, don't, don't forget to leave your comments, your thoughts, your questions in the comment section. Uh, what do you think about these numbers? Do you think 338's average is correct? Do you think the Liberals are going to get more than 53 seats or less? And what about the Conservatives? Do you think they're going to get more than 228 or less? I think it's going to be closer to 250. NDP, I think it's going to be closer to 15. And you will have a major conservative majority. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Please, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. And I'll be back shortly with a new video.